Hello friends, I'm the Reverend Terry Peterson, Minister of St. John's in Gurick. Today is Sunday, the 30th of April, the fifth Sunday in April, and the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. On the fifth Sunday, sometimes we do something a little bit different, so I thought that today we would have a different kind of online service where um, we will reflect together on the reading and on some of the hymns from the day today. Um, Tilly is helping, apparently. So we begin first with the reading from the book of Acts, and our reader today is Elder Anne Love. The reading today is from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verses 1 to 3, to set the scene, and then continuing in chapters 14, verses 8 to 18. Now, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaean, a childhood friend of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. In Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking, and Paul, looking at him intently and seeing that he believed he could be healed, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And the man sprang up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called, called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifices. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that it has in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to follow their own ways, yet he has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heavens and fruit fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. One of the hymns we sang in the sanctuary this morning is an Eastertide hymn called Christ Has Risen While Earth Slumbers, and it ends with these lines. Christ is risen, Christ is present, making us what he has been, evidence of transformation in which God is known and seen. And as we think about this reading and these words, I would invite us to ponder that man in the story who has never been able to walk before. He, his feet don't work properly, and from the moment he was born until this day in his life, he had never stood on his feet, never supported his own weight, and never moved on his own feet, like under his own power. So he'd never in his whole life been able to walk. Now, of course, he had seen other people walk, but he'd never experienced it for himself. We don't know what age he was when he encountered Paul and Barnabas that day. Maybe he was 15, maybe he was a young man, or maybe he was a sort of middle-aged or even older man. Maybe he was in his 30s or 40s or 60s or 70s, we don't know. We don't know how long it has been that he has not been able 
to move himself from one place to another under his own power and support his own weight. But we do know that he's never done it before. And yet, when Paul looked at him intently, Paul saw something in him that he described as faith or belief that it was possible that he might be able to do this thing that he has never done before. And I wonder how many of us have faith that something that we have never done before is possible. Something we have never experienced before is possible. In our whole lives, maybe we've never experienced it, but we could, we could. So this morning in the sanctuary service, I invited people to talk together about something that St. John's has never done, but might be possible. And they came up with some incredible ideas of things that God might be calling us to do, or things that at least are out there as possibilities, though we have never tried them before. And I would love to hear your thoughts on something that the church has never done before, but it's possible. And then as we ponder those things, to think about the man's response. Paul called out to him, like across presumably some sort of crowded marketplace. He'd been speaking to people and he called out to the man in a loud voice and he could have just gone over and spoken to him privately, but he didn't. He called out in a way that made it clear that Paul believed that the man could in fact get up and walk, that this possibility that the man could only imagine, but at least he could imagine, was truly possible. And so he shouted out, get up and walk. And the man didn't just slowly lumber up. He sprang up in response to this calling. He leapt to his feet. Can you even imagine that sort of response? Because that is the imagination we require. That is what constitutes faith to be healed. The possibility is at least in our minds, our imaginations would be wide enough to think that something other than what we have always known is possible. I said to the church this morning that one of my favorite, perhaps my actual favorite, not just perhaps, definitely my favorite line, my favorite verse in all of scripture comes from the prophet Isaiah chapter 43. Through the prophet, God says, um, do not remember the former things because look, behold, I am doing a new thing. Even now it springs forth. The same word as the man springing up. Even now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Even now, a new thing, something we have never experienced before, God is doing. Can we perceive it? Or are we, like the other people in the story, too caught up in the ways we have always known or the things we have always thought? Um, so we're taking that new thing and trying to shove it into an old worldview or an old framework. Or as Jesus might say, putting new wine into an old wineskin. There's not room in that old framework for God's new thing in that moment in Lystra. And that's probably true throughout history, including today. There's not room in our old way, in our old institution, in our old traditions, in our old preferences, in our experience, our worldview, like all of the things that we have used to sort of make a box that we hold our ideas about God and our understanding of what God calls us to do. There's not room in that old box for the new thing that God is doing. We're going to require to take at least the lid off, maybe dismantle the whole box, or maybe just punch some planks out so that there's room for growth. But we can't just shove what God is doing now into a construct created for a previous time. 
And in Lystra, that previous time, like that box they had built was based on fear because there were stories in the tradition of Zeus and Hermes coming to a town and not being welcomed appropriately. And then the whole town was destroyed because of that. So the people were afraid that if they didn't do this thing, make these sacrifices to these people, that they might find themselves on the wrong side of a God's wrath. Fear is not a good way to build a box. Not that any box is necessarily good, but a fear box is definitely not going to hold the goodness of God. So today I wonder, what have we never done before but might be possible? And what might we need to take out of our box in order to make it the right shape for the new thing that God is doing. Because if there is one promise that we know is absolutely true from our God who, who raises the dead, then we can say that there is a new thing springing forth. Do you not perceive it? We are invited to spring up and meet that new thing and pursue it and follow and do it just as God calls. May it be so. Amen. Another hymn that we sang today is John Bell's hymn, The Truth That Sets Us Free, and it includes this first verse. When the wheel of fate is turning and the mills of God grind slow, when the past seems more attractive than the future we don't know, when our confidence is waning and we lack security, comes the timeless word of Jesus that the truth will set us free. Whatever we may feel bound by, the word of Jesus is still true and the truth will set us free. Let us pray. Each day is a miracle, O oh God, though we rarely pause to notice. We give thanks for your generous providing, for rain and sun, for changing seasons, for joy and laughter, food and water, breath and belonging. In every ordinary moment is an opportunity, as all creation witnesses to your goodness. As we come to worship, we take time to see what you have done, to offer our praise and gratitude, to reset our egos and attention, to be ready for whatever new thing you will do today. For you are in the midst of the world, living God, working for life in all things. And we confess that we rarely recognize you because we are boxed in by our own experience or background or traditions or expectations. We ask today for the faith to imagine that something else is possible. Give us the trust to let go of our nostalgia when you are moving on from our comfortable groove. We also pray this day for all those who find themselves uncertain about what is to come. For those who have thoughts and ideas about possibility, but it is not yet realized. We pray for those who are suffering, those whose bodies don't work the same way they have done before, and those who have been defined by their body's ability. We pray for those whose minds work differently from others, and for those whose spirits are faltering. We pray for those who have not been seen in all their humanity, but only glossed over. May your healing fill them and surround them and lift all people into possibility that brings joy. You have gathered all people into your embrace, O God, and offered yourself to us. In gratitude and praise, we offer ourselves to be transformed by your goodness, to become bearers of your blessing for others. In all things, we pray with the power of the Spirit and in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus the Christ, 
who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn in the sanctuary this morning was Lord for the Years, which ends with this beautiful verse that says, Lord for ourselves in living power, remake us. Self on the cross and Christ upon the throne. Past put behind us, for the future take us. Lord of our lives to live for Christ alone. That is my prayer for us today that we may indeed put our self, our boxes that we have built to try to contain God, that we might put that on the cross and allow Christ to be on the throne, passed behind us, committed to the future that God has in mind for us, even if it is something we have never experienced or imagined before, that we might be open to the possibility of the risen Christ bringing us into new life with him. So friends, go to be alive with Christ, alive to the possibility of resurrection, alive to the possibility that the risen Christ will once again lead us where we have never been before and trust that wherever he leads is the best place for us to be. And as you go, may the spirit of God go above you to watch over you. May the spirit of God go beside you to be your companion. May the Spirit of God go before you to show you the way and behind you to push you into places you might not go alone. And may the Spirit of God go within you to remind you that you are loved more deeply than you can possibly imagine. May the fire of God's love burn brightly in you and through you into the world. Go in peace. Amen. Mm